Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell uh, continuing with Chapter 10. Today, we're looking at Section 10.4 on comparison tests. Surprise! You actually get to look at my mug today because I have a fun little demonstration uh, for you that I think will help you to understand the comparison tests. And it involves balloons. Everybody loves balloons. So the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is blow up this balloon. Hopefully I've got enough lung power today. All right, that should be fine. And we'll tie that off. This is even harder. Than, okay. Well, that's fine. Except now it's going to bug me. All right, never mind. Okay, so I've blown up this balloon, and now I've got another balloon. And my question for you is uh, well, the question is always going to be is the next balloon going to pop or not? And so in the next balloon, I am going to blow less air. All right. I blew this much air into the first balloon, and now I'm going to blow less air into this balloon. Will this balloon pop? Well, you probably know the answer since I was not able to tie that one off. I'll just let that go. And sure enough, it did not pop. All right. So think of the balloons as series. And if the balloon doesn't pop, that means the series converges. If the balloon does pop, that means the series diverges. So what I've just shown you is I, uh, we had one series that converged. That was the green balloon, which is now deflated because I did not get a, I did not get it tied off. Um, and then I blew less air into the second balloon and it did not pop. So the moral of the story is when you have two series and the larger one converges, then this, uh, and by the way, the series have to have uh, non-negative terms, okay? Uh, then the smaller series will also converge, okay? All right, balloon demonstration number two. Here we go, I've got this nice green balloon and I'm gonna blow some air into it. All right, that balloon popped. So now I'm thinking about taking this second balloon. My dog is freaking out a little bit right now and blowing more air into it. And no, I'm not actually going to do it. So what's going to happen to this second balloon? Well, of course, it's also going to pop. Moral of the story, if you have two series and the smaller one diverges, and again, the series have to have non-negative terms, then the larger series will also diverge, okay? And those are the comparison tests. So let me go back to the presentation. All right, I used to always have my face up in the corner uh, of these videos like you see now. And then um, sometime last semester that stopped working so I just kind of gave up on it. And uh, when I was getting ready to do this balloon thing, um, I thought, well, I need to be on video for this. So I tried it and all of a sudden it's working again. So I don't know, technology. <clears throat> all right, so this is called Theorem 10, the comparison test. I usually call this the direct comparison test uh, because there is another kind of com comparison test. And I wanna make it crystal clear always which one I'm talking about. 
All right, so let A sub N, C sub N, and D sub N be series with non-negative terms. And suppose that for some integer N, D sub N is less than or equal to A sub N is less than or equal to C sub N for all N greater than that number N. In other words, eventually this is true from some number on. All right, so part A, that was balloon demonstration number one. If C sub N converges, then A sub N will also converge. And as balloon demonstration number two showed, if D sub N diverges, then A sub N will also diverge. Notice that for the direct comparison test, there are two versions of this. There are only two ways that it works. Uh, number one is that the larger series converges. Number two is that the smaller series diverges. So we're going to talk a little bit later about what happens if you can only find a smaller series that converges or a larger series that diverges. All right. And you might have an idea uh, what's going to happen there. All right. Here is a, a little graphical illustration of part one of this. If the total area uh, sum of C sub N of the taller rectangles is finite, then so is the total area sum of A sub N of the shorter rectangles. All right, so let's look at some examples. I will switch over to the tablet. All right, I think I've got little pieces of balloon here all over the place. Okay, the sum n going from one to infinity of n minus one over n, plus, uh, n to the fourth plus two. All right, so one very common trick with these is to ignore or, or only keep um, dominant terms. The word was escaping me for a second there. So I'm going to try to compare n minus 1 over n to the fourth plus 2 with n over n to the fourth. Okay. Notice that on the left-hand side, the numerator is smaller and the denominator is bigger. All right. So those two things are working together to make the expression on the left-hand side smaller. And of course, n over n to the fourth is one over n cubed. So what I'm going to do is compare the given series with the sum n going from one to infinity of one over n cubed. And uh, this is called a P series. We talked about this kind of series in the last section. A piece, uh, the series, um, sum of one over n to the p converges if p is greater than one. And of course, p is greater than one in this example because it's equal to three. Therefore, this series converges. All right, and the given series is even smaller than that. Therefore, I can say by the direct comparison test, the sum n going from one to infinity, n minus one over n to the fourth plus two converges. Unfortunately, I have no idea what it converges to. The comparison tests don't help you with that. If I knew what the series um, sum of one over n cubed converged to, I could, uh, uh, tell you that the given series converges to something smaller, uh, but I don't even know that. I don't even know what the sum uh, one over n cubed converges to, but it's fine. The question was, does it converge? All right, next example is kind of similar. The sum n going from two to infinity of the square root of n add one over the square root of n squared minus three, okay? So again, it's all about just looking at the dominant terms. So let's compare n square root of n plus one over the square root of n squared minus three. 
let's compare that with the square root of n over the square root of n squared. On the left-hand side, the numerator is bigger and the denominator is smaller. So those two things are working together to make the expression on the left-hand side bigger. And the square root of n over the square root of n squared is uh, the square root of n over n, also known as one over the square root of n. So now let's talk about the sum n going from two to infinity, one over the square root of n, also known as the sum n going from two to infinity, one over n to the one half. This is another P series, isn't it? And this time, P is one half. And the important thing about one half is that it is less than or equal to one. We learned in the last section that a P series with P less than or equal to one diverges. And since the given series is even bigger than that, I'm going to say, therefore, the sum n going from 2 to infinity, square root of n add 1 over the square root of n squared minus 3 diverges by direct comparison test. All right, one more example of direct comparison test. We have the sum n going from zero to infinity of e to the power negative n squared, okay? All right, so of course, e to the negative n squared means the same thing as one over e to the n squared. So what's gonna take a little bit of practice with these is figuring out what series to compare it to, okay? Uh, and I would say in the first two examples, it was pretty clear. I mean, that dominant term thing is a very, very common trick. Uh, this one is maybe not quite so obvious. It turns out that uh, a really good series to compare this to is one over e to the n. Okay. So of course, uh, as long as n is greater than or equal to zero, Actually, I guess this is true for any integer, uh, but it's, it's certainly true for n equals zero, one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. n squared is bigger than n, which means that uh, e to the n squared is bigger than e to the n, which means that one over e to the n squared is less than one over e to the n. Oh, maybe we should say less than or equal because for n equals zero and one, they're actually equal. All right. And the good thing about one over e to the n that is not true for uh, one over e to the n squared is that it is actually a geometric series, right? One, uh, the sum n equals zero to infinity of one over e to the n is one plus one over e plus one over e squared plus one over e cubed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. To get from one term to the next, you're always multiplying by one over e. All right, so this is geometric. R is equal to one over e. And that is less than one. So that series converges. And in fact, I can tell you what it converges to. Uh, but I'm not going to bother because the question is really about the sum n equals zero to infinity of e to the negative n squared. Uh, and I will not be able to tell you what that converges to. But what I can tell you is that it does converge. And it will converge to something less than whatever um, e to the negative n converges to. So for that reason, it might be useful to know. But again, they didn't ask. So 
this series converges by the direct comparison test. <laughs>